We are now to the latter end of our discussion on ventilation. I've made this a separate video because there is a lot of detail here that will be extremely important for you as a nurse and your future career in school as well, of course. Let's go ahead and begin discussing right over here on the right side something called the total lung capacity. Your lungs can hold only so much air. For males, you got an average of 6,000. For females, you have an average of 4,200 milliliters. All of this air can be retained within your lungs. However, there is a portion of this that you can never vacate air completely. You cannot collapse your thoracic cavity completely unless it gets run over or, well, you get thrown into the depths of space and it gets vacuumed out. This space that will never ever empty because, well, you never em ever empty that volume is called the residual volume. Residual means left behind. So this residual volume is left behind in your lungs no matter what. You can't, you can only go so far with exhaling air before you can't exhale no more. Even This is about 1,200 milliliters in males, 1,100 milliliters in females. Everything else you can control besides residual volume, you can't get rid of residual volume. Everything else that you can move inside your lungs is called the vital capacity. Remember that vital means your the necessity to live or to what is necessary for life. This vital capacity is how much your lungs are able to push in or push out air. Within this vital capacity, obviously you're not breathing like crazy <laughs> using vital capacity all the time. That's just not necessary. Your body doesn't need that. So when you're relaxed breathing, your relaxed breathing, your normal breathing is about 500 milliliters, male or female, and it is called your tidal volume. It's called a tidal volume because think about it as the tide. When you breathe in and breathe out, you are making waves, just like the tide of the ocean. You are making waves. So this is your tidal volume. You're always seeing these particular waves. Now, are you restricted to just the tidal volume? No, remember you got the vital capacity. So what are these other things? Well, you got the inspiratory reserve volume. That's the volume re inside your lungs that can take on extra air. So inspiratory reserve volume is all the air you can inhale just above the tidal volume. For males, it's an average of 3,100. For females, it's an average of 1,900. So again, the inspiratory reserve volume is as if your norm, breathing normal tidal volume, and as soon as you inhale and hit the cap of that tidal volume, and then inhale even more after that is considered your inspiratory reserve volume. Let's look at the expiratory reserve volume. That's the space that you have available to push out even more air if need be. Do you need to refresh some of that air? Okay, well, let's, let's push out all the air that we can and then draw in new air. That is your expiratory reserve volume. So all three of these fit into your vital capacity. Now that we know all three, let's talk, let's give vital capacity another term. If you were to breathe in all the air that you can, and then at this point, push out all the air that you can, that would be your vital capacity. Your vital capacity can be affected in many ways. Whether you affect it the the integrity of your lung tissue. If you affect it bad poorly it badly enough via pollution, maybe you're smoking, maybe you're living just in a bad area with bad air. It can eventually destroy the elasticity of your lungs. It could destroy its ability to withhold or release air, thus increasing your residual volume and decreasing your vital capacity. As you get older, too, you become your muscles become less and less able to push and pull more air out, and your residual volume can also increase as well, and thus limiting your vital capacity. Let's look at the last two terms really quick. We got inspiratory capacity and res functional residual capacity. Inspiratory capacity, if I were to put it in my own words, you're breathing normal. At the end of a, a normal exhalation, you breathe in all you can. 
That is your capacity to inhale. That is your capacity to inhale. Your functional residual capacity, you're going to notice, includes your excretory residual volume, reserve volume as well as your residual volume. Remember, residual volume is the one that is dead space. You cannot, no matter what, get rid of your residual volume unless you're out in the cold depths of space or you get your thoracic cavity gets crushed. So the functional residual volume is just what's there in your lungs after a normal exhalation. Alrighty, thank you very much. I hope you all have a good day and remember you got this.